Hockey Hall of Famer Doug Killer Gilmore was the centerpiece of two of the biggest and most lopsided trades in NHL history. Both deals were made amidst major controversies and were orchestrated by the same GM, Cliff Fletcher. Let's take a look back at these two historic deals and this edition of the PHA Big Trade Review. NHL teams originally dismissed young Doug Gilmore due to his lack of size, but the St. Louis Blues chose him in the 1982 NHL draft by selecting him with their seventh round pick. Now he'd get a shot in the NHL and quickly established himself as an outstanding two-way player for the Blues. And he was even chosen to play in the 1987 Canada Cup. His best season was a 105 point output in 86-87. His future in St. Louis looked bright. But Gilmore became embroiled in a legal conflict. He was sued in August 1988 by the parents of a 14-year-old girl who alleged that Gilmore had sexually assaulted their daughter. His then-wife Robin, the Blues organization, and the team's president, Jack Quinn, were also named in the $1 million lawsuit as it was alleged that they, quote, knew or should have known about the alleged abuse. The Blues were also accused of pretending to negotiate a payment while attempting to trade Gilmore without informing the other team of the allegations. Finally, one week later, on September 6, the Blues traded Gilmore to the Calgary Flames in a multiplayer deal. Gilmore, Mark Hunter, Steve Bozek, and Michael Dark were sent to Calgary in exchange for Mike Bullard, Craig Cox, and Tim Corkery. Gilmore expressed disappointment at leaving the Blues, but stated that, quote, From what has happened the last week, on our part, on the Blues' part, it was the best solution. The civil case against Gilmore was eventually dropped, and he'd spend four and a half productive seasons with the Flames, scoring 81 goals and 295 points during his 266 games in Calgary. He's best remembered for scoring the winning goal in Game 6 of the 1989 Stanley Cup Finals as the Flames won their first and only Stanley Cup championship. A one goal lead. If they get one here, here's Gilmore coming in. The backhand, a rebound. He scores! Gilmore gets that goal we were just talking about. And it coming to center. Passes into Robinson. He stopped at the Calgary line. The net is empty down there for Mullen and for Gilmore. Gilmore has a shot to win it all here. He scores! Gilmore scores! With 103 left, Gilmore and Calgary leads four to two. So many of them. Here comes the siren. Here come the Flames. Champions, 1989. While Gilmore, freed from legal issues, was celebrating a Stanley Cup run, the remaining players in the trade struggled. The undisciplined Bullard played just 20 games in St. Louis before being peddled to the Philadelphia Flyers. Corkery never made the league. Cox played half a season with the Blues and eventually bounced around the minors and other NHL clubs. Hunter played more of a third-line role in Calgary and was seldom used in the 1989 playoff run. Bozak was immediately flipped to the Vancouver Canucks for a third-round pick and Dark never played for the Flames. In the end, the trade turned out to be a lopsided steal for the Flames GM Cliff Fletcher, who stated the Flames could have never won the cup without Gilmore. In subsequent years, however, Fletcher would become GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs and hit orchestrate another steal involving Gilmore. The Flames, like some other Canadian clubs, began to experience economic hardship in the 1990s as the rise of player salaries made for tough times. Gilmore had a salary arbitration hearing in the summer of 1991 that created tension between him and Flames GM Doug Risebrough. According to Gilmore, quote, One day we're on the road in San Francisco. I get up to go to the bathroom around 8 a.m. and I could hear something through the adjoining doors. Believe it or not, it was Doug Risebrough beside us in the other room. I could hear him on the phone talking about trading me. So I knew right then that I was eventually going to be traded somewhere. On New Year's Eve 1991, Gilmore was named first star to win over Montreal and he then promptly packed his bags. He decided he wouldn't play again until he was dealt. The deal was done 24 hours later. And what a deal it was. The deal involved 10 players, with the Leafs sending Gary Lehman, Michelle Petit, Jeff Reese, Craig Berube, and Alexander Godniuk to the Flames in exchange for Gilmore, Jamie McCowan, Rick Natras, Rick Walmsley, and Kent Manderville. 
In terms of the sheer number of players involved, the trade was the biggest in NHL history and remains so to this day. And while other trades may have had a bigger impact, Wayne Gretzky, Eric Lindros, and Phyllis Pizzito all come to mind, that list is a relatively short one. This bizarre trade wouldn't have even made sense if Gilmore hadn't been included. You know the trade is ominously bad when the highest scorer you received was Craig Berube. And if you ignore Gilmore, even the other players dealt away scored almost exactly as much. The key acquisition for the Flames was former 50-goal scorer Gary Lehman, but he had lost his scoring touch and scored just 11 goals in 59 games in Calgary. Conversely, Gilmore would score 238 points over the next two seasons. He finished second in the NHL in assists both years and won the Sulky Trophy as the league's best defensive forward. In addition, McCowan provided solid defensive play for several years. From his arrival in January 1992 in Toronto, through back-to-back conference finals appearances in the spring of 93 and 94, no forward, not named Gretzky or Lemieux, dominated the NHL like Gilmore. Back to Gilmore, scores! The best hockey player in the world today and the most valuable player as far as I'm concerned. The first two and a half years that Doug was in Toronto, he was considered by many to be the best player in the NHL. He just carried the Leafs on his shoulders. With the fiery Pat Burns behind the bench, Gilmore and his lunch bucket teammates gave Leafs Nation lifetime memories of back-to-back conference finals appearances. The 1993 run was especially memorable. The Leafs knocked off the favorite Detroit Red Wings in the opening round, survived a seven-game set with Curtis Joseph and the St. Louis Blues in round two, and pushed Gretzky and the Kings to seven games in the conference finals. The city of Toronto was electric. And while the Leafs didn't win a cup in those two years, their fans still reminisce to that time as if it were a championship run. Gilmore went on to play another eight seasons in the NHL while the rest of the trade participants disappeared into obscurity. Gilmore was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2011, and his uniform, number 93, is retired by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Cliff Fletcher was enshrined in the Hall of Fame in 2004, and undoubtedly his killer deals for Gilmore were a big reason why. The Pro Hockey Alumni is dedicated to promoting and celebrating the legends who made the game great. Here are two more videos created for those who love the history of the game.